This is Lenny. Lenny is a, uh, a fig tree. It's actually a white Genoa. And you're not looking at it as a, uh, it's not a Christmas tree, but it is a grafted tree. And I've been grafting Lenny now for the last three years. Lenny is short for uh, Lanern. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, but that is a, a mythical beast that has many heads like a hydra. And if you cut one head, a new one will grow. And here is where I've cut one branch and I've got three branches that came off of it. It's perfect. This little tree is perfect because um, I love the growth habit of it. It's got a nice, beautiful trunk line and then branches out like a beautiful tree and each branch um, grows in a way that makes it very uh, I guess very good for grafting um, and so this tree already has a good number of my top 10 figs already on here black zadar golden riverside black madeira white madeira um, cold and domino war and I've put on more varieties this this spring and um, they've all kind of taken. So look at this here. There's one. Another one that's still alive, not exactly pushing bud yet. Here's one that's pushing bud. This is Black Madeira. Um, I even threw Desert King on here because Desert King is actually a very good fig in Seattle. Um, maybe not outside of Seattle, but in definitely um, climate zones that have similar type of or areas that have similar type of climate zones. Um, the one I've struggled with has been Smith. Smith is a hard rooter, hard to graft, hard to air layer. I don't know why, um, but it is what it is. So most of the, the grafts on here, I've, I've done cleft grafts, but I've also used, you can look at here, the grafting tool, and this is kind of what it looks like when you use that U-shaped graft tool. And uh, cleft graft, that's just because it's easy. But when Ram came over to my house, he kind of turned me on to doing Z grafts or whip and tongue. Sorry, not Z grafts, whip and tongue. Um, and it looked really good. I mean, it, it, the whip and tongue seems to give you a cleaner, um, a cleaner graph when they do. Uh, become successful and meld together um, and that's always a good thing right because nobody needs this bulky graph union but if it's nice and clean um, it'll probably be a little bit stronger as it develops so um, here's another grafting tool this one was done last year so I've done all clefts this year, but moving forward, I'm gonna start doing whip and tongue. So let's take a video, or sorry, let's watch this clip of Ram. He came over to my house and we just kind of did an impromptu thing. I guess he's been grafting about 400 different trees this year and just doing it at everybody's houses. Uh, and he came to my house and helped me graft uh, a loquat. Brought a couple cool varieties for me, which I'm very, very, very excited about. Um, and. Uh, also showed me his technique. I love it. Uh, let's let's take a look. I've got a special guest again today. His name is Rom. You've seen him here before, and um, Rom's actually going to graph a Kanko Loquat Scion wood onto one of my uh, Loquat seedlings that I've got here. This is a little bit of a special treat and impromptu, but um, uh, I want to take some video of him doing that and, and share that with you guys. Uh, Kanko cyan wood, and this is the piece of cyan wood. This is the rootstock, and uh, you can see that they are not exactly matched in caliper, but that hardly matters. Uh, low pots take really easily, and they grow very vigorously. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to trim the extra excess of these leaf petioles out, but I'll just leave a bit so that because what's the bud is actually right under this petiole and when the bud actually wakes up this whole thing will turn brown and it'll drop off and the bud will just push. Okay, so I'm going to leave pretty much how many buds should I leave? Actually, let me leave three buds so it's, it's going to be nice and healthy. 
can use the other one for a different time. Right, so it's, it's nice and good inside. It's nicely lignified wood. You can also do green wood with uh, low pots, all the, most other things. But uh, lignified wood usually takes better and uh, grows more vigorous. I like your necklace over there. Uh, oh yeah, so, yeah. I'll, so I'll tell you, talk a little bit about the necklace. <laughs> so this necklace is basically what I use, it's called buddy tape. And I don't use uh, parafilm anymore. I use buddy tape. <laughs> and buddy tape has this nice property that it actually comes in these strips that can be broken up nicely. And, uh, and they also are very stretchy, They're like super stretchy. So when I wrap them, they uh, look how nicely they stretch and they don't tear and they don't break up in the sun as easily as parafilm does. Even the parafilm M breaks very easily, breaks down very easily. So I just wrap the top off and we'll do the rest of the wrapping later. And then the first thing I do is uh, remove the leaf when I, when I plan to do the graft. And just, the first thing I do is I just do a cut. That's it. Just a cut at an angle. And I use my knife to clean it up. So rather than make the whole cut with a knife, I actually use the pruner to make the cut. Then use the knife to clean it up. Rob, tell, tell people how, how many uh, graphs you made this year. <laughs> oh yeah, this, this year I went a little crazy. <laughs> so I think I did well over 400 graphs. Jesus. And that includes graphs I did for myself and for people around me, you know, friends yeah. and other people. Because everybody seems to want to call me when they want to get a graph done. So you are the grafting uh, mobile, <laughs> mobile grafting <laughs> <laughs> service. <laughs> Yes. It looks like it, yeah. So there you go. So nice. I don't, they kind of matched. You can kind of let me show this to you. They kind of sort of matched. They're decent. They're good enough. What I say is, don't go for perfection. Go for good enough. Mm -hmm. But uh, wrapping is where it's critical. So then the other thing I do, which you may not have seen lots of other people do, is just for the back cut, I wear a glove so I don't cut myself. And I use a grafting knife. I don't use the uh, the other sorts of knives because grafting knives are actually beveled on the side which is closer, that which is away from the wood. So when you cut, it doesn't slip. It actually cuts right through. There's zero, there's zero chance of slipping. But even for that, I still wear a glove because even that zero chance is too much for me. What kind of graft are you doing here? I'm doing a whip and tongue. So then there is basically this is the whip. The first card is the whip and then I do a tongue to cut it in this way. Set that aside and do a second cut. Just with a gentle rocking motion. So do you, you try to line it up the... Uh, Cambium? The tongue cut in the middle so that way it just matches up perfectly. How do you... Let's see. So what I do is I kind of line up the sides. So... The, there is some contact on one side or the other, but usually with a whip and tongue graft, there's so much contact that you will, it's, it's impossible to make a mistake. So all this stuff about matching cambiums, you can forget about all that. You never have to do that. So then I take another piece of body tape, stretch it. See that? Stretches nicely. Wrap it up. It's a nice little tip That's here. That's my rope. Oh, very nice. That's my rope. I just yeah. The thing. Where do you buy your body tape? Uh, I got my body tape from uh, CRFG, which is CRFG? From a C uh, yeah California Rare Food Growers uh, uh, okay. Sign Exchange. Okay. That's the cheapest place to get it. Okay. But you can buy it on Amazon. Yeah. So that's it. It's wrapped. Right. Now the next thing I do is just seal that guy. Well, it's nice to witness you do this. Real pro here. Done. And your graft is ready. And mm. this thing is about 90% likely to take. That's awesome. 
I would say 100%, but you know, there's always a chance yeah, something, always will not, a chance. something will not take. And this is a good time of the year, especially in Seattle, where it's just about 65 to whatever, right? So Yeah, so right now we're in uh, it. beginning of July is uh, the time of year. Yeah. Well, you uh, but you know, you we'll probably all June. From May. You can draft all yeah. the way from May. I would say so. We're just having colder yeah, weather colder than weather usual. Now. Yeah. So that's yeah. it. Very cool. Make it. Easy, super. <laughs> Look at that. Brand new variety, Canco, on uh, on my seedling low quat. I, I, I had no idea what to do with this thing, so I'm, I'm glad you were here. Just be the right time. And there you go. Yeah, it's gonna okay. it's gonna push, and you're gonna have a we're gonna have a second Canco in Seattle like, that I know of. Very cool. Oh, really? Is it that rare? It's not uh, particularly common. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it's not exactly a you rare know I like variety, that. but yeah. not you will never find it in a nursery. Never in a nursery. You'll never find it in a nursery. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so Ram is addicted to not just figs, but also all fruits. All fruits. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that. Yeah. Thanks, Ram. I appreciate it. You're most that was very informative. I, I think everybody else will find this informative as well. Awesome. All right, man. So I was really inspired by Ram when he came over and he did the uh, the low cut uh, grafting uh, to do more grafting in my own yard, and um, I went on a kind of a grafting spree the next couple of days, and I grafted everything. My I just wanted to put different varieties on varieties that I thought, you know, were not as productive or just mix and match. Um, so I did my, my figs, my plums, I did my pawpaw, I did my persimmon, and uh, I, I even made my own <laughs> grafting necklace, my little bling bling for, uh, for grafting. So thanks, Rob. Uh, I appreciate it. And um, you've really inspired me to do more grafting in my own yard and I hope you guys do as well uh, so if you have varieties of figs let's say that you know you don't like or whatever instead of just throwing it away take a, another variety and graft it onto that tree so that way um, you know you have a bigger tree that's uh, going to produce fruit maybe even sooner than, than just doing a rooted cutting which is a little bit harder to do so see you guys next time go out and graft your trees Thank you for so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourself. Until the next time. Bye-bye.